All right. Yeah, I'll let you read this one. Okay. Uh, Brad uh, State, S-T-A-I-T, and, and at S-T-A-I-T-E-B uh, for the uh, handle. Is it more important to showcase your individual style solving an issue you are familiar with first hand? Or should you try to work on the skill of solving an issue for others? This is an interesting one. Because I also see this as a, when you're in school, do you design to create your own brand or you design to just create a cool object? Or do you pick a brand, say, hey, I'm going to do Porsche and I'm going to design a toaster for Porsche. Yeah. I don't think any, either one of these is right or wrong, but I will say this. I've, I've sort of been thinking about, about this a lot in, in terms of design education. And I think when you're first starting out, it makes sense to focus the projects on yourself. Like, how would you design your life to be the best life it could be? I think that's the easy get for sure. And, and in the beginning, I think I agree. You should go for that because yeah. it's it's right there in front of you. Because I think that in order to develop the skill to be empathetic to others and to design for them, you have to first empathize with yourself and design for yourself. Have you ever designed an object that was so beyond what what you could empathize with? Um, like something that you would have never used or had will never use again. I mean, I, I think back to a project that I did in school with Reed and uh, my friend Oscar Salguero, which was a shoe for, for Haitian right. children. Mm -hmm. um, and there was, I mean, there was like a, a bit of disconnect for like, we don't know what these people are going through. And, and we can kind of guess how how we might want to style this shoe based on clues that we can pick up and people i mean we interviewed um students that were from haiti to try and get a glimpse into the culture um but i i mean i almost feel like there's on, only so far you can go with that kind of project before you need to bring in somebody from that culture to to have them like have some ownership over it yeah in order for it to be like if we were to take that project to the haitian people as like a couple kids from the united states like for them to feel ownership over it i, I feel like we would have to access people within that culture yeah for sure um it's interesting but um you know i, I think yeah i mean i i think i had a project where i did the the training tool for dogs right like this training device that brandon was brandon mcmillan yeah. lucky dog yeah james is a every big fan. saturday <laughs> on cbs dream team oh boy you don't understand how much my wife and i love james has cable. brandon mcmillan james and has lucky cable. dog <laughs> it's so good it's such a feel-good show it's good it's good i i met the guy so i feel like the magic's not there for me i'm sure that you Watch the show. Why is the magic? What are you saying about Brandon? Well, McMillan? when he when he says that your your train device isn't correct or is it not is it's not the right uh, color. It's, Nick, Nick, listen to, to the expert. Okay, okay? okay, the expert was saying that we should make it bright red, like fire truck red, and I was like, that's a polarizing color. People are gonna not buy this because it's uh, obtrusive and hideous. And he was like, oh, well, what do you think? I was like, let's make it a light blue. But and we fought back and forth on it for like a good. Why month. was why did he want to make it red? Because he just liked red. Going that, back to the, that going was back purely to... the the answer that he gave you. Yeah, because you asked him point blank why red, and he said because I like red. Yeah, there wasn't any sort of reason for like no. dogs responding to certain colors. No, he he he's not a designer for one. Right, and obviously color is a very subjective thing. Kind of going back to our our topic, like when well, you dive into color, that's almost to the the subjective degree where you can't really justify it. Nick, I hate to burst your bubble, what? but working in kitchenwares for three years, I'll have you know that the top selling colors are black and red. Okay, well, that's kitchenware. <laughs> the top selling colors in training tools oh, no. are black and blue. But anyway. Um... But yeah, that was that was interesting just because it's a device that I would never use because um, I'm not a professional dog trainer. Right. Um, 
and it would take a lot of time to learn how to professionally train dogs. So I really mm-hmm. did have to understand his needs and his wants, um, even though he wanted to make it red. But I didn't, and we made it blue, thankfully. Because <laughs> it would have been horrible if it was red. Fair enough. It's a great sign. I'm actually proud of it. Is that subjective? If it was red, I wouldn't be proud of it. Is that subjective, Nick? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anymore. Oh, no. Oh, man. So, yeah, I, I think I like your idea of doing your first few projects being your individual style, kind of figuring out, you know, something around around your life that you can solve. Yeah. And then venturing off into the more difficult projects. Well, here's here's the other thing is like, I don't know that you necessarily need to pursue an individual style because I think your individual style will, will always come through. Oh, yeah. That's a, I mean, that's a whole nother topic really, but a lot of people wonder where do they get style from? And it is something that just naturally comes. I mean, I think in a way you can pick and choose what you like. And I think just subconsciously you reiterate that into your style. Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't, I think it will always come through. I think um, as much as you might try to fight it, I, I actually think it's harder to just like straight up copy somebody because like you really have to get into their head space in order to do that or to like legitimately verbatim copy a design right. in order to copy somebody because I think it's almost nearly impossible. Like you just, you'd have to go about it so mindfully like copying somebody. I, I just think that as you develop, your individual style develops. It's just, like, unavoidable. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't stress about it. I think Yeah. just take it naturally. Yeah. Um, thanks for sending that in, Brad. 